Welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and this video is a continuation of the anatomy series. Today we will be talking about the cranial cavity. Before we get started make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our exciting videos so let's get started. So we have the cranial cavity divided into three parts. The one which is present anteriorly is the anterior cranial cavity. So this is our anterior cranial cavity which is composed of the frontal bone then we have the ethmoid bone and then we have the ethmoid bone contains the crystagalli and the cribriform foramens and some part of the sphenoid bone. So this is our anterior cranial cavity or we can say anterior cranial fossa now talking about the second part of the cranial cavity which is the posterior cranial cavity which is composed of the greater wing of the sphenoid the body of the sphenoid so body of the sphenoid in between we have this depression which is known as cella tersica where there is a pituitary gland or pituitary stalk then we also have the temporal bone on either side so the boundaries for the middle cranial fossa is going to be this so this marks the middle cranial fossa and few foramens which we'll also be talking about then in the today's lecture series then we have the posterior cranial fossa in the posterior cranial fossa we have some part of the temporal bone body of sphenoid and the occipital bone so this marks the posterior cranial fossa so the cranial cavity can be divided into three parts the anterior cranial fossa the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa let's see in a three dimensional structure the anterior cranial fossa contains the frontal lobe so we'll be talking about all these fossa what they contain which part of the brain they contain so anterior contain frontal middle contain temporal and the posterior contain the brain stem and the cerebellar cortex so this is the anterior part let's see the anterior middle and the posterior part so that's the anterior cranial fossa which contains the frontal lobe here we have the frontal lobe then we have the middle cranial fossa which contains the temporal lobe so this is going to be the middle cranial fossa and then the posterior cranial fossa which contains the cerebellum and the brain stem so we have cranial fossas divided into cranial cavity into three parts the anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa so let's re let's remove the cranium and see all the fossas So if you can see appreciate over here we have the anterior cranial fossa, the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa. The anterior cranial fossa if you can see over here this is the anterior cranial fossa. Then we have the middle cranial fossa. This is the middle cranial fossa. Let's see it in another diagram. In the this view, we have the middle cranial fossa, which you can appreciate nicely, and the posterior cranial fossa. So here we have the middle cranial fossa. This is the middle cranial fossa which contains the sphenoid bone the temporal bone and which contains the temporal lobe of the brain and inferiorly we have the 
posterior cranial fossa which contains big foramen which is this foramen magnum so this is the posterior cranial fossa which contains the cerebellum and the brain stem and a frequently asked question in the mcqs is that the nerves present in the posterior cranial fossa so we have nerves arising from the posterior cranial fossa which are from 3rd to 12th cranial nerves so only the first two are not arising from the posterior cranial fossa rest of all the cranial nerves contains the brain stem arising from the brain stem has 3rd to 12th cranial nerve so guys let's see remove the cranium and see inside the cranial cavity so we have the anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa so let's see the contents of all these fossas what is present in the floor of the anterior cranial fossa so we have this frontal bone which is present in the anterior cranial fossa so this marks the boundaries of the anterior cranial fossa so this is our anterior cranial fossa we have the frontal bone and if you can see over here we have this cribriform plate of the ethmoid so this is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid and in this cribriform plate of ethmoid we have the crista galli so this is the crista galli this perpendicular one and we also have cribriform foramens over here very small small foramens for the ophthalmic nerve uh, the oculomotor nerve sorry the oculomotor nerves which contains the multiple openings for the olfactory nerve axons which are coming from the nose from the nasal cavity to the brain to the olfactory bulb which is present in the brain so this cribriform plate of ethmoid is present on the roof of the nasal cavity then we have the frontal bone also which forms the roof of the orbit so if you turn it uh, the anterior view you, you will find the orbit so this frontal bone forms the roof of the orbit then we also have the lesser wing of the sphenoid so this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid to make you understand the lesser wing i must show you the sphenoid bone so guys let me show you the sphenoid bone this is the sphenoid bone now we have the lesser wing and the greater wing of the sphenoid and in between we have the superior orbital fissure so let's remove this sphenoid bone and have a look at the sphenoid bone so this is the sphenoid bone guys so we have this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid the small wing if you can see it is a butterfly like structure so this is a lesser wing and we also have the greater wings which are bigger so these are the greater wings of the sphenoid in between we have this superior orbital fissure from which the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve passes so this is the ophthalmic i'm sorry the trigeminal nerve the trigeminal ganglion which has three divisions ophthalmic nerve the maxillary nerve the mandibular nerve so the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve passes from this superior orbital fissure in between we have the body of the sphenoid and if you can see a small depression in this particular area it is for the pituitary gland so here the pituitary gland comes and sits and adjacent to this pituitary gland we have here cavernous sinus and if you can see this sphenoid bone is a butterfly shaped bone so if you see this sphenoid bone it is it it has a shape of a butterfly
now we'll again see the anterior cranial fossa so the lesser wing of the sphenoid comes in the anterior cranial fossa if you can see the lesser wing of the sphenoid and the superior orbital fissure also so the boundary of the anterior cranial fossa guys is this so this is the boundary of the anterior cranial fossa so if you can see the lesser wing of the sphenoid comes in the anterior cranial fossa while on the other hand the greater wing of the sphenoid comes in the middle cranial fossa so this is the part of a middle cranial fossa in the anterior cranial fossa we see the lesser wing of the sphenoid and in between the anterior cranial fossa and the middle cranial fossa or we can say in between the lesser wing of the sphenoid and greater wing of sphenoid we have the superior orbital fissure so lesser wing of the sphenoid bone is present at the floor of the anterior cranial fossa greater wing of sphenoid is present on the floor of the middle cranial fossa and superior orbital fissure is present between the greater wing and the lesser wing so let's have a look at the superior orbital fissure as well so if you can appreciate over here we have the superior orbital fissure so this is the superior orbital fissure present between the lesser wing and the greater wing or we can say anterior cranial fossa and the middle cranial fossa and the lesser wing of the sphenoid contains the optic canal which is for the passage of optic nerve which is coming from the eyeball so if you can appreciate over here we have the optic canal so this is our optic canal which is again present in the anterior cranial fossa let's mark the boundary of the anterior cranial fossa guys so this is the anterior cranial fossa and in the anterior cranial fossa we have the optic canal which contains which is present at the lesser wing of the sphenoid which is for the passage of the optic nerve coming from the eyeball so in the anterior cranial fossa we have studied that anterior floor of the anterior cranial fossa is formed by the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone then we have also studied the frontal bone which forms the roof of the orbit then we have also studied the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone so middle cranial fossa is majorly composed of the sphenoid bone so let's see the sphenoid bone first so that we can understand the middle cranial fossa and up till now we have studied that this is the optic canal then we have the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone which is present in the anterior cranial fossa then in the posterior cranial fossa we have this greater wing of the sphenoid and in between we have the superior orbital fissure so this is the superior orbital fissure it is a fissure shaped for a man so that is why we call it the superior orbital fissure then this is the greater wing of the sphenoid which is majorly forms the floor of the middle cranial fossa so this is the boundaries of the middle cranial fossa in the middle cranial fossa along with the sphenoid bone we also have the temporal bone on either side and till the petrous part of the temporal bone so this is the petrous part of the temporal bone we have over here so let's see the sphenoid bone let's remove the sphenoid bone to understand the anatomy of the sphenoid bone first so guys here you can appreciate the superior orbital fissure this is the superior orbital fissure then we also have the optic canal which is present over here now we also have some foramens which is present in the greater wing of the sphenoid 
so also we have studied that this is the cella turcica which holds the pituitary gland and lateral to the cella turcica there is cavernous sinus so here we will be studying about the cavernous sinus then there is a this groove which holds the optic canal is this optic groove so this is the canal then we have the groove also you can see this elongated process this process is known as the clinoid process so it is present anteriorly it is known as the anterior clinoid process when it is present posteriorly it is known as the posterior clinoid process so this is the anterior clinoid process so that's the anterior clinoid process and we have also studied that the greater wing of the sphenoid and the lesser wing of the sphenoid so the this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid and then the big wings are the greater wings so these are the greater wings of the sphenoid in between we have is the body of the sphenoid so let's see the foramens which are present in the greater wing of the sphenoid so the first one we have is the superior orbital fissure which is just a fissure then this is the foramen rotundum then we have the foramen ovale and then we have the foramen spinosum so how you can remember is from the mnemonic ross so first we have the foramen rotundum second we have the foramen ovale third one is the spinosum so rotundum ovale and spinosum and above this there is superior orbital fissure now the fifth nerve which is the trigeminal nerve this is the trigeminal ganglion it divided it gives three branches the ophthalmic branch maxillary branch and the mandibular branch so the ophthalmic branch passes from the superior orbital fissure the maxillary branch passes from the foramen rotundum and the mandibular branch passes from the foramen ovale so this you this is very easy to remember because it is in sequence so the rotundum r o s rotundum ovale and foramen spinosum and if you turn this phenoid bone and see this phenoid bone from the anterior view so you can see superior orbital fissure nicely over here and the optic canal is so visible guys now we have turned it and we are seeing it from the anterior aspect so this is our superior orbital fissure which is present between the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone or we can say the anterior cranial cavity and the middle cranial cavity then we have the optic canal just above the superior orbital fissure and also you can appreciate the foramen rotundum over here now this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid and just beneath it is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and because since we are seeing it from the orbital aspect so this is the orbital surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and in between you can see this sinuses air sinuses which are present in the sphenoid bone so these are the sphenoidal air sinuses or the sphenoid sinuses also you can see the pterygoid processes these two are the pterygoid processes so this is the midline one which is towards the midline is our medial process the one which is away from the midline is the lateral process and when we have studied the muscles of mastication all the um, all the muscles of mastication except the lateral pterygoid closes the mouth except the lateral pterygoid which opens the mouth right also we have studied one more thing in the muscles of mastication there are two muscles one is the lateral pterygoid another one is the medial pterygoid now rest to our temporalis and mesenter so lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid origin is from the pterygoid plate which part of pterygoid process guys the lateral plate of the pterygoid process 
so you can remember it the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid see this is the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate it it gives the origin to the lateral pterygoid muscle while on the other hand the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid plates gives the origin to the medial pterygoid muscle that also we will be talking about in the muscles of mastication so from the medial surface the medial pterygoid from the lateral surface the lateral pterygoid but the plate pterygoid plate is the lateral plate of the pterygoid so we have two plates of the pterygoid process the the medial plate and the lateral plate and these pterygoid muscles originate from the lateral plate of the pterygoid and inserts on the mandible so that's the sphenoid bone this is the sphenoid bone you can see the superior orbital fissure optic canal now it is very visible and also you can see the greater wing of sphenoid all the foramens of the greater wing of the sphenoid and little bit portion of the pterygoid plate also you can see now this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone and beneath it it is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone now it is the greater wing you can see so guys in the middle cranial fossa we have see the superior orbital free fissure which is present at the junction of the anterior and the middle cranial fossa then there is cella tersica which holds the pituitary gland lateral to it is the cavernous sinus and we have also studied that this is the foramen rotundum r o and s so rotundum ovale and spinosum and medial to this foramen ovale you can see this foramen with the lacerated margin so this lacerated margins like this so this is the foramen laceratum so we have rotundum ovale and spinosum present on the greater wing of the sphenoid bone this is the cella tersica and lateral to the cella tersica we have the cavernous sinus and guys also the internal carotid artery passes at the floor of the foramen lacerum it does not cross the foramen lacerum it just passes at the floor of the foramen lacerum like this before entering into the cavernous sinus so the content of cavernous sinus one of the content we have already studied till now which is the internal carotid artery so the foramen lacerum has got lacerated margin and it is medial to the foramen ovale so you can see this is r then o and s so if you can see this foramen laceratum it is medial to the foramen ovale it is medial to the foramen ovale this is the foramen ovale it is medial to it so that's the floor of the middle cranial fossa now coming to the posterior cranial fossa guys so let's see the content of the posterior cranial fossa so from the petrous part of the temporal bone till the occipital bone is our posterior cranial fossa so this is our posterior cranial fossa and in the posterior cranial fossa the first foramen we have is the internal auditory meatus so this is the internal auditory meatus which is present in the petrous part of the temporal bone then over here you can see see next one is the jugular foramen so this is the jugular foramen and next to the jugular foramen we have the hypoglossal canal and beneath the hypoglossal canal you can see this big foramen which is the foramen magnum so the first one in the posterior cranial fossa we have the internal auditory meatus which is present in the petrous part of the temporal bone so this is the petrous part of the temporal bone and it contains the internal auditory meatus so the seventh cranial nerve passes from the 
internal auditory meatus which is the facial nerve then we have the jugular foramen so this is the jugular foramen from where the jugular vein passes along with the jugular vein 8th 9th and 10th cranial nerve also passes from the jugular foramen along with that the spinal part of the accessory nerve also passes so 8th 9th 10th and 11th the spinal part of the accessory nerve also pass from the jugular foramen so it is present below the internal auditory meatus next we have the hypoglossal canal canal as the name suggests it is a canal for a hypoglossal nerve so which is the hypoglossal nerve is the 12th cranial nerve so the hypoglossal canal is for hypoglossal nerve next one we have in the occipital bone is the foramen magnum so you can see the foramen magnum the big foramen is our foramen magnum so this is the foramen magnum so we have internal auditory meatus jugular foramen hypoglossal canal and the foramen magnum internal auditory meatus 7th cranial nerve jugular foramen 8th 9th 10th and 11th cranial nerve actually guys hypoglossal let's again start it the hypoglossal canal there is 12th cranial nerve then we have the jugular foramen which is the 9th 10th and 11th and then we have the internal auditory meatus from where the 7th and 8th i'm sorry that earlier i've told you the 7th cranial nerve so the internal auditory meatus we have the facial nerve and the vestibular cochlear nerve right because this is the external ear see the external auditory meatus it is the external ear so which all nerves we have passing from the external auditory meatus is all the nerves to the ear so we have the facial nerve along with that we have the vestibular cochlear nerve which is the eighth cranial nerve then we have the jugular foramen from where the jugular nerve pa jugular vein pass as well as we have the glossopharyngeal nerve the vagus nerve and the hypoglossal nerve so in the posterior cranial fossa we have internal auditory meatus which has 7th and 8th facial nerve vestibular cochlear nerve then we have the jugular foramen from which 9th 10th and 11th cranial nerve pass so the glossopharyngeal nerve vagus nerve as well as the spinal root of the accessory nerve then we have the hypoglossal canal from where the 12th nerve pass which is the hypoglossal nerve then we have the foramen magnum for the spinal cord that forms the floor of the posterior cranial fossa so in the posterior cranial fossa you have seen the occipital bone as well as the petrous part of the temporal bone where we have seen the internal auditory meatus as you can see over here so this is the cranial cavity which we have studied hope that you have enjoyed this video so if you have enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up also comment in the comment section below because this motivates me to put more free videos for you guys and to make free notes so till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i'll see you soon in the next lecture